Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. That's my sofa, this is my doggy Roscoe, and my name's Paul. So today, for this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna continue going through this document dump of information uh, that has come out recently in the Debo case. Now, specifically in this video, what we're gonna be doing is looking at the interview conducted with Alex Cox and investigators. Uh, this took place after the tragic event, the murderous event, I should say, that happened with Charles Vallow, uh, the thing that Alex did to him. So what I wanna do is kind of break this down. Uh, and the way this video is gonna go is I'm gonna look at different parts of the interview and make commentary on them. Now, if you don't wanna hear my two sofa cents on any of it, I'm gonna link the whole interview as you know the whole thing down below. I've extracted just some parts that stuck out to me that also showed inconsistencies with what Lori was saying while she was being interviewed the same day. Really, you can't look at his interview without also looking at Lori's. I haven't even begun to look at Zulima's to get some back information on all of this or whatever. So you're going to see me also kind of pull from some of Lori's interview, also from the Melanie Pulowski and Ian interview. Again, I can't leave that alone. Yes, I will be going over her recent, um, the, the body cam footage that came out about her arrest in Utah. Um, I've just kind of been still going through all this other stuff. So anyways, um, before we get all into that, I want to thank everybody who makes this channel possible. It would not be here without you. Roscoe appreciates it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sofa Squad, for being here and making this an awesome community and channel. Now, let's go ahead and get to addition. Okay, before we even start, we need to take a quick, like, rewind to some of the information that came out when Alex Cox's ex-wife had that phone interview with investigators, and she kind of spilled the tea in regards to the dynamics of Alex and Lori's relationship, and which is part of the reason why she left him, and that whole thing. Because really my opinion after listening to that is there was definitely an inappropriate thing going on between Alex and Lori, but this also contributes to his protective thing. I personally think he was in love with him still, in love with her, um, and that she knew that, and she used part of that as like leverage to get him to be her little lapdog. No offense to Rodsko, I'm sorry, honey. Now, I did a full breakdown of that evidence that came out going through the phone call. It was totally cringeworthy. So if you want to hear that, I'll put the link to that video down in the description uh, below. But let's just listen to one quick part of that for the context of this video. In that conversation, he told me that he wanted to bait Joseph Ryan into a fight so that he could kill him. And if I had really at that time thought he was serious, because he said it in a joking way, but it was still creepy and weird. Weird enough that I never spoke to Alex again. That was the last time I ever talked to him. I just thought, okay, jail has not been kind to him. He's off his rocker. I really don't want to have this guy in my life anymore. Now, the reason I wanted to play that is because it's so interesting to me that she is coming forward with this information and basically describing the exact thing that seems to have gone down between Alex, Lori, Charles Vallow, of him trying to do with Joe Ryan. So again, obviously, the Joe Ryan situation is a totally different situation, lots of similarities. Lori usually be in the middle of them. So I just feel like that is such a precursor to this entire thing that took place with Charles Vallow because I do believe they ambushed him. I do I don't believe the story at all that went down. And so let's continue to move on with some of the stuff that Alex is saying in this interview. And let's set the scene real quick. So remember, Charles Vallow is allegedly showing up that morning at Lori's to take JJ to school, spend time with him, whatever. Alex had conveniently spent the night before According to Alex and Lori and Tylee, there was some kind of a, you know, a, a, an argument that took place. The phone was the central theme of this. Then, according to Alex, uh, Charles came after him with a bat and he had to take his life in self-defense. Now, obviously, that story has been crumbling and falling apart. And so there's that. But we'll just go into this whole video with that as the precursor. Now, just as a side note, I also think that 
a theme with Alex is that he had some kind of anger toward any man that was with Lori because it wasn't him. Now again, that's not confirmed or anything. That's just my own two little sofa sense on that. But I do think there was a level of jealousy as well as ownership over Lori. So with all that little synopsis right there, let's go to that first date right after the events happen. Now we all remember seeing this go down. You know, Alex is out on the curb desperately trying to, you know, act like his head was, you know, all hurt and da 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 da. Lori pulls up very nonchalantly. She had taken the rental car with JG and Ty Lee, dropped JG off at school, stopped at Burger King along the way, got some flip flops. I mean, she was not upset, okay? And then to top it off with, she's laughing and talking about what the neighbors think about her. I mean, it was very off-putting then, and it's even more so now. Okay, so all that took place, and then let's go ahead and jump into the interview, and let's specifically start with Alex. Let's start with this head injury of his. It's starting to, how does it feel right now? Kind of sore, but not bad. Okay. Any headaches you have at all right little now? Bit, no? A little bit. Just a little bit? Okay. Are you not feeling nauseous or anything? Well, I'm a little, but not bad. Okay. Do you do you want me to call paramedics? Check 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 you out or? No, I think it's more adrenaline than anything. Gotcha. Now I find it very bizarre that the whole scene that went down with these people, the level of aggression that they're describing, the entire scenario that this is the only injury he sustains with the baseball bat to the back of his head. I mean, and the, what he's describing in that little piece of, oh no, I think it's mostly adrenaline. Oh no, it's just that, doesn't even really have a headache. I mean, you know, come on. Now also, didn't Lori even say something in her interview to kind of back up Charles Vallow's skills as a baseball player? How is he holding the bat? Just like that, like backwards. Like he was swinging, but like, Swinging it backwards, he would have got like. Like he would have swung it backwards at me, not frontwards. Okay, yeah. He, had, he was a base, professional baseball player. Okay. <laughs> so it wasn't a good idea for Charlie to get on the bat. <laughs> Probably not the. Best. I mean, he played semi pro. Yeah. When he was, yeah. <laughs> but. So again, Alex takes a swing to the head, you know, doesn't really have a headache, not really nauseous, mostly feeling adrenaline so on and so forth but he felt threatened enough to shoot now i get when you get into certain laws and states and stuff like that you know it's not like there has to be a whole bunch of things present but for this particular scenario it seems really flimsy and clearly it was because we know now that this was a setup an ambush if you will now another thing that i find very inappropriate for both alex and Lori is that behavior that we saw towards the end there with Lori. The whole dynamic of the way she's so, you know, just laid back laughing about the baseball thing. Oh, you know, he, he played professional baseball. It's good that Tylee got out of there. You know, and that little snarky quip at the end of it, it's semi-pro. You know, and I'm just like, what a disgusting human being. You know, she is going to use his status as that or whatever, like, to brag in the moment. I mean, this woman's crazy, okay, right? But again, this behavior between her and Alex of the two little stand-up comedians after this is so alarming to me. How old's your sister? About 44 or 5. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it sad that I don't know? <laughs> I have to do the math. So <laughs> Start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I, can't I told you. It's a crazy <laughs> question. Well, so you know what's sad when you're posing for photographs and you don't have a good side? <laughs> yeah. He, had, he was a base, professional baseball player. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, it wasn't a good idea for Tyler to get out of the house. <laughs> Probably not the. I mean, he played semi pro. Yeah. When he was, yeah. <laughs> It's either PPE or she's Chinese. <laughs> Knowing her, I'm going to go with sick. Um. I can't roll my eyes hard enough at these two. But according to Miss Melanie Pulowski, this is normal behavior. You know, there's been a lot of criticism of how Lori acted afterwards and, you know, how she's smiling on camera. And I know Lori, and she, when she's uncomfortable, she kind of or in shock, she'll just kind of laugh or, or smile, try to make light of it. And I, I do the same thing. That's just a something, how we handle being in shock. And every person handles being in shock differently. But mm -hmm. Here's my thing with that whole thing. Little Miss Melanie and her, you know, buzzword shock and da-da-da-da-da. 
I can tell you this much. I ain't no shrink, okay? I ain't no psychologist, any of that stuff. Looking at Lori and Alex and those videos, they don't seem like two people in shock, okay? They seem giddy. And what they seem like is more and more like when they realize they're getting, getting away with us or that they are winning over the investigators, if you will, that they're becoming more relaxed and comfortable in it. I mean, they seem excited, okay, is what they seem like. They don't seem like they're in shock. I, if you watch me, you know at this point I'm somebody who I deal with my own traumas and things like that through laughter and whatnot. And I can look back at sometimes where I was like genuinely like, oh my God, no, I ain't never been in this kind of situation, okay? Um, of having just done that to somebody and then talking about it or whatever. But I mean, my own experience, I'm just like, yeah, that's the, and no, this is, this is, these are excited people. But again, that's just my two sofa sense. I ain't nobody but a guy on the sofa giving my opinions. Okay, so one thing I want to look at is some of the dynamics of this interview that just don't make sense, especially when you look at Lori's answers as well. So now, in the beginning of this interview, Alex is like, yo, yeah, it's like spending the night, we're going to like go to the water park, you know, do something, like have some kind of fun or whatever. The big thing I want to do is just make sure that we have all the details yeah. accurate yeah. and factual. Yeah. Um, so, because kind of some of the information we got from patrol didn't really match up what Lori told us yeah. compared to, so walk me through what happened today. Well, I uh, stayed the night at my sister's. Okay. Uh, we were planning to go do something fun day. We hadn't really decided. I was thinking maybe we go. I was going to take her to the range. Okay. Um, or go do something. Okay. And we'll take JD to some water park or movies or whatever. Um, okay, so there's that. Before I make commentary on it, let's listen to this next clip. Now, this is a little bit deeper into the interview when asked about Charles showing up and whatnot. Did. Did Lori ever say, like in the last couple of days, that Charles was coming to town? Um, yeah, she said he was coming to pick up JJ. Okay. So you guys were expecting him to show up today? Yeah. Okay. So you knew, uh, okay, it, didn't, it wasn't like he just yeah. showed up on its own. No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't okay. a surprise or anything like that. But you don't know what they were arguing or no. fighting about? His behavior was a surprise, but uh, him showing up was not a surprise. Okay. Okay, so if you look at the first thing where he's like, you know, we were going to do something fun, maybe take her to the range. I I'm not sure if he's talking about Lori or Tyler or both. But then he specifically says, maybe take JJ to the water park. So then you hear this where the cop's like, you know, well, did you know he was coming? Yeah. We're going to talk about that high-pitched thing in a second. And it's like, yeah, we knew he was coming. His anger was a surprise. It's, there's a couple of things with that. Okay, so first of all, when he's like, well, his anger was a surprise. Now, again, I try and play devil's advocate here, but I'm like, okay, maybe that was a surprise. But also during this interview, Alex has already said that the last time he saw um, Charles was when Charles showed up at his house. He had Ty Lee with him or whatever. Alex had Ty Lee. Charles was trying to find Lori. There was this turmoil, yada, yada, yada. And so Charles was like, you know, P.O. or whatever. So I'm just like, well, then why would it be a surprise that he was angry? Like, I mean, that seems like it might be on brand. Like, if I was in that situation, I would be like, okay, what's the drama going down? Fill me in. Like, do I need to be on point here or what? You know? Now, the high pitch thing. Again, y'all, I... Let's y'all. We need to all try and get the behavior panel, as well as I can't think of his name. He's the dude uh, with the shaved head that does the the body language stuff. I can't think of his name right now. Um, we need to beg him and those guys to do all of these videos, and maybe they already have. I'm not sure, but last I checked, I know that one dude hasn't. Anyways. I, what I'm getting at is, I ain't no body language expert, but the way he like went high pitch right there, I'm like, that sounds like not normal, right? Okay, so he's trying to make some, yeah, yeah, we knew he was coming. You know, and I'm just like, oh, I have no doubt that he knew that because they were going to ambush him. You know, but it's like, he's trying to play off this totally different reason. And I'm sorry I keep looking this way, but my notes are right here on the computer and I'm getting a little excited here. Okay. So that whole dynamic right there with that playoff, I'm just like, no, absolutely not. That whole little aspect, and mind you, it could be a, a play on words that I could be reading too deep into. And what I mean is like the beginning part where he said that they were going to take JJ to the water park. Maybe he meant they were all going to go to the water park. Again, it's hard for me to look back because we now know all this other information. But again, I just feel like when they watch this interview again, I'm just like, did this not jump out? Now, another dynamic to this, we've already kind of touched on this, but let's listen to what he says, is the reasoning as to why he spent the night, right? Is there a reason you spent the night there last night? Hmm? 
Not really. Okay. Just hang out. We were going to hang out today. Okay. Um, did your sister ever tell you she was concerned for her safety or well-being for Charles coming there? No. Okay. But, um... Now, remember, this clip that I just showed you, this is coming after the detective has already like talked to Alex for quite some time left the room for quite some time and then come back so it and again i don't know for a fact i wasn't there but it would appear that he had gone out taken notes from Lori's interview and is coming back to confirm or ask some of these questions so in fact let's see the reason and look at why Lori said he spent the night your brother lives there with you no okay. he had stayed with me last night because i was worried he was going to come over and okay. cause trouble with me okay and just wanted someone else there, like my brother there, because I trust my brother. And... and literally every time I play her thing, I just roll my eyes to the back of my head. And ugh, of course she trusts her brother. Let's you see what, how that went. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. So that right there, when the detective comes back in and asks Alec, you know, about the, what was there a reason? No, no, nothing, nothing to look at here, folks. Just keep on moving. And then Lori's like, well, I wanted him to stay there. I trusted him in case anything happened. Again, think of even if you are with a friend, especially a sibling, a family member, whatever, and you've been, most of us have been in some dynamic of helping someone out who is either in a breakup or something like that. You cannot tell me for one second that Lori, pretend that they weren't lying, okay? Pretend they weren't lying. Pretend this is normal, right? You can't tell me for one second that Lori wouldn't have been like, look, here's the deal. This might be what's going on, okay? That part just flies all over me that they seemingly just, you know, blatantly lied like this and were able to continue on for so long. So that part, it really bothers me that one. Again, it just kind of POs me to be quite honest, but let's continue. Now, another major inconsistency that just kind of made me say, wait, what, how did this go unnoticed is the 911 call. If you went by what Alex said, I mean, he was on the phone with 911 doing, you know, uh, life saving skills and all sorts of stuff. Um, so you fire a couple times. Yep. You don't, you don't know where they're at. They're gone. They're yeah. gone. What happened right after that? Um, right after that, I, um, uh, I went to the kitchen and rinsed my hands off because okay. I had blood on the back of my head. And then, uh, I went back into the room and put the gun down and grabbed my, grabbed my phone. And then I went back into the kitchen and called 911. Okay. But now let's listen to what Lori has to say about the 911 thing and then we'll comment on it. When you came back in and you saw him on the ground, where was your brother? Did you see him where he was at? Yeah, he was right in front of him. Okay. Like it all happened very quickly. That right. was, I mean, I was, I feel like I was there because I was right there like, yeah. a second later. Like okay. I just went around the kitchen to get away from him. Did your brother say anything to you at all? Do you remember? No, we were both just in shock. Okay. Like it was just a, I mean, I didn't say anything. I went out with the kids just to check on them first, and I was going to come back in, maybe, uh -huh. but I didn't. I was like, I just have to get him to school okay. and call the police, come back, you know, whatever. Did anybody say any? Did you, you or your brother say anything at some point about calling the police or calling 911? Do you remember? Yeah, he called me. Okay. And he said, are you taking JJ to school? Uh -huh. And I said, yeah, we need to call the police. And he okay. said, okay. Okay. So according to Lori, she's right there, feels like she is when all this goes down, right? So there's that little dynamic, but then also notice how she slides that in about when well, he called me because I left, you know, he's like, are you taking change to school? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, we need to call the police. Da -da -da. Now, obviously we know at this point that number one, this was a way bigger gap in time than number one, Alex is making it out to be. Number two, just right off the bat, Lori and his story don't really match in regards to where were people at, what was going on, so on and so forth. And then also we know at one point during this interview, he'll say like, oh, he tried performing CPR, or whatever. Well, we know that didn't happen, right? So we also know that the gunshots weren't lined up with how he said it went down. We know all this now, but looking back on it, and just even this basic inconsistency here of wait hold on what you know it just it doesn't add up now let's listen to how alex describes the actual shooting so you're saying right there he's yeah. right here he's there and you said well, what what yeah. happened what happened when you came out with the gun i said put that bat down he's like what are you going to do it's like you're going to threaten me i was like no i'm just going to defend 
myself, so you put that bat down. And he goes, what are you going to do it like that? And he came at me. Okay. And he'd already hit me in the head. Okay. So he came at you at the bat. What yes. was he doing with the bat when he, when he came at you? It was in his right hand like this. Okay. So he's holding it low and he's coming at yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you gave him, you, how many times would you say you told him to like put the bat down? Once. Once? Okay. And then he started advancing towards you? Yes. Um, how many shots did you fire? Uh, I don't know. A couple. Okay. Were Tylee and your sister? I don't, I don't, I didn't see him, so I don't know okay. who they were. Um, okay, so look at how much he relies on language, on setting up the like, self-defense thing of, you know, I told you, know, I was defending myself. He'd already hit me once, and the whole nine yards, right? Now, also notice how chummy he is with the cops. If you watch the whole interview, I'm just like, oh, Alex serves those vibes of, like, mall cop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no offense, people are mall cops, but you know what I'm saying? Like, the kind of cliche of, like, I wanted to be a cop, but I couldn't, you know, that type of thing. Okay, so, but then most importantly, notice what he says about when he's like, was, was Lori and Tylee there? Well, I didn't see them. And you notice, remember with Lori, what we just watched, where she's just like, you know, oh, we, we're just right there. I was in shock. And, you know, the whole nine yards. Again, I guess you could kind of be like, well, maybe they were in shock and this happened and they didn't really remember this. But the inconsistencies are so blatant to me. Again, I just find it like... You know, how did this, you know, continue on after this? So now once this interview starts rounding out, the officer is, you know, kind of tidying up loose ends, whatever. And he tells Alex they're, you know, doing like a, a criminal check on him or whatever. And let's listen to what Alex and the the officer have to say about this. No, we're just running a criminal history to make sure that yeah. they're not a, not a prohibited possessor. So there's no felony convictions. Correct. And, there, was uh, a, there was a confessed um, felony aggravated assault. Okay. In Austin, Texas in 2007, I think. Have your rights been restored? Are you oh, legally yeah. able to... Yeah, 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 rights yeah. are re re restored. All, You're all done. able to possess a firearm. I was never convicted. Oh, okay. I pled guilty, but they have deferred adjudication in Texas, so I completed probation and then... Gotcha. That was that. Okay, so it was an open-ended thing, so yes. it's a misdemeanor now. Well, whatever. It's just on there as a whatever. I don't know what the technical record is. Okay. I know I went to court, and she said, all your rights are restored, and gave me the paper, and I'll find it. Gotcha. So again, you hear him describing this misdemeanor, or I don't really know what the technical term is, and did I was never convicted, you know. I mean, again, it just, it runs all over me. So here's the thing, I'm just like, okay, this is, how often does somebody find themselves in these situations? That right there, I don't care what the conviction was, right? Pretend we didn't even know this person. It's like, you were just involved in this whole sketchy sounding situation with your sister, right? Now you're telling us there's some misdemeanor assault kind of a charge going on. Obviously, they're going to get the deets on that themselves. But again, I'm just like, did this not set off like major alarms? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, hello. Um, I, again, I, I'm pretty baffled as to how this scenario how they were able to just walk away from this. I can see how they walked away in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that happens a lot. I mean, look at Grand Amato. He was allowed to walk away after that one interview, but they got him the next day. That's kind of what I would anticipate for something like this to have happened of, just to have the group of cops go back, listen to everybody's story, and be like, well, I just watch the videotape again and be like, this doesn't make sense, right? But again, I'm not an investigator. I'm not a cop. So... You know, I don't know how all that works or whatever, but I'm just, you know, sitting here on my sofa making opinions. So I want to hear what you have to say, Sofa Squad. You know, do you think the cops should have called this, you know, during this time or whatever, or soon thereafter? What do y'all think about, you know, Alex being Lori's lapdog? Again, no offense, Roscoe. Um, what do you think about the whole thing? Anyways, that's it. Again, thank you everybody for sitting here listening to me go down my little rabbit hole on these interviews and whatnot. I really appreciate it. And until we meet up on the sofa again next time real soon, I'll see you soon.